Hey everyone, I'm Dan Spada, and in today's episode, we're discussing how to teach students to use AI. Without a doubt, one of the hottest topics right now is the role of artificial intelligence in the world of education. Today, we're going to discuss what your students need to know to use AI both responsibly and effectively. Because as we're going to discuss, your students will be using AI whether you have that conversation with them or not. So the hope is that through this presentation, you'll learn some of the tools that you need to know to facilitate that conversation and be proactive in that discussion with your students. Now, this video does go along with two presentations that I have. Uh, both are linked in the description below. A great way to begin the conversation is just to talk about what AI is and how students are already interacting with AI every day in their lives. You know, they're probably going to think you're talking just about ChatGPT, but you can talk about things like smartphones, streaming services, social media, ride sharing apps, virtual assistants, email services, online shopping, smart appliances, how all of these things are already being used. And, you know, even think about when they're typing, how their phones adapt to their language. Uh, that's what AI really is. And that's how it works. You know, at its core, AI involves training computers to learn from data. Just like people learn from experiences and get better at certain things, AI systems learn from large amounts of information. So one term they might be familiar with is machine learning, which involves feeding computer systems lots of data and allowing it to find patterns on its own. And then it uses algorithms to process and analyze all that data. We'll briefly talk about how generative AI works, but essentially, uh, generative AI just takes lots of examples to understand patterns. So like looking at many pictures of cats to learn what makes a cat as an example. And you can see there's a picture here of a cat that looks almost real, but is not. Um, and so you can explain how AI, it creates new things by learning the rules. And so it combines them in different ways to create new items. So it might mix cat patterns to make new cat images that it hasn't seen before. And then it uses feedback to sort of tweak that and adjust the rules. And you, know, you can show them the picture of here's a good looking cat, but there's also some really examples uh, or some examples of really bad looking cats. And and as we'll talk about in a few minutes, there are ways that your students can learn to use AI and help AI work more efficiently. And here's just a few examples of different types of generative AI. Uh, there's art and images. So here's some a picture that looks very real, but has been generated by AI. And obviously that can cause a lot of confusion. There's an example in the uh, notes on the presentations about that whole story about the Pope wearing the jacket and how people thought that was real. And there's an example later in the presentations where students can try to identify uh, deep fakes and real images, but it's very hard to tell the difference in a lot of examples. Uh, also, music and sound. You know, here's a great example. It's my absolute favorite of Johnny Cash singing Barbie Girl because it sounds so real. And uh, there's something called Music LM. Here's just a brief example of that. Now, at the time of filming this, I had beta access to Google's Music LM. If you don't have this and you're an educator, you should definitely sign up for the waitlist because this is a really great thing to show students because you can type in anything you want and Music LM will come up with a unique sound to fit that description. I'm just gonna say music for a presentation on AI and it will create a unique and new song for you. But also video and animation. Here's an example of how easy it is to take an image and animate it and make it look real. And this technology is only getting better and easier for everyday people to use. Text and writing is another example. Your students are going to be very familiar with this. And, you know, a good example is to talk about in May of 2023, the Writers Guild of America went on strike because they were asking studios to promise to not use AI to generate scripts or write variations of their work that's already been written. And generative AI is just being used in so many different industries, design and fashion, healthcare and medicine games and virtual worlds, essentially the work that used to take a long time can now be done a lot quicker. Now your students are going to be very familiar with what we call the big three, ChatGPT, Google Bard, Bing Chat. As of creating this video and making this presentation, those were the big three. Those are where your students are going to default to when they need information. But what we want to show them is, yes, those can provide you the information, but there's also other places where you can actually learn easier. 
So here's an example of asking ChatGPT what photosynthesis is. You'll see it's very long, detailed answer, not exactly student friendly. And here's that same question asked to CK12's Flexi, which is at ck12.org slash Flexi. You'll notice right away a more simplified answer. Um, so it's much more concise. There's analogies that students can just one click and find photosynthesis explained in a sports, music video, video games, fashion, and all different types of analogies that relate to their lives. Uh, they can translate it into a hundred different languages. They can uh, rephrase it so that it's more simple or that it's got more details. And they can even click challenge me where they can actually test to see if they understood the material, which is very different from just reading and then trying to copy and paste. Here, they're actually trying to learn. Now, I won't go through other AI tools because, as you know, these are just changing by the day. New ones are popping up. They're developing so quickly. But what students do need to know is how to use AI, and these are some great guidelines. So using AI as a study aid, so using it to summarize text or generate flashcards, um, but not just simply looking it up to get answers because they're not going to learn that way. AI can be great for research assistance, so it can be a very powerful tool in helping you find reliable resources and helping you find relevant articles and suggesting keywords for your searches. But in itself, AI is not credible. It is not a reliable source because AI is known to hallucinate, which means it makes something false up. Uh, it's not based on facts or real data or events. It just creates it to provide an answer. AI is also great for suggesting uh, or giving you improvements for your writing, but it isn't a substitute for proofreading. So it can help you use better grammar and punctuation, but it doesn't replace human eyes. And again, just like the hallucinations, AI is not perfect. So students need to rely on their own skills. They can use these as tools, but not to replace what they already know. And as I showed with the Flexi example, AI can be like an overpowered calculator, which won't help students learn. It will just give them answers. So if students use it to help understand how to do their math, uh, that's excellent. If they use it to get the answer for their math, that's not helpful because then they haven't learned it. And when they have to show that they are demonstrated mastery of a certain topic, they're not going to be able to understand it or answer on a quiz or a test. So the most important thing students need to know is AI is a great resource, uh, but it's important that they critically evaluate all the information that it's providing. It's a tool to supplement learning, but it's not going to replace them having to put in that work to actually learn. And just like we teach students how to use search engines effectively, which I cover in a different video, or if you have the presentations we cover uh, in future slides, uh, but students need to learn good tips and habits for prompt engineering. Because as we know, AI responds better to complete sentences rather than fragmented phrases. And it's also important that students know to experiment and iterate. So if they don't get the, what they're looking for the first time, to try different combinations, try something else, see what didn't work and you know how you can rephrase what you're asking to get a better answer. It's also really important that students avoid using complex language. So sometimes they might feel like they have to speak smarter uh, instead of conversationally. And the more concise and clear what they're asking, the better results they're going to get, which is why they should also avoid ambiguity. So if they want to know advantages and disadvantages of something, they need to ask that. Because if you just ask an open-ended question, uh, they're going to get a really big response like you saw with the photosynthesis answer. And perhaps one of the best habits students can get into is providing constraints. AI has access to so much information and it doesn't know who it's talking to. So if they ask a question and say, explain it to me like I'm 12, AI is going to understand it's talking to a 12 year old and it needs to provide information that's appropriate as well as use language that the student will understand. So one really fun tip is if students are struggling creating a good prompt and finding their answer, they can ask the AI to help them generate a prompt by just giving them information of what they're looking for. The AI will give them a prompt, they can copy paste that, and then ask again. And so uh, there's lots of different ways that students can use AI to help themselves learn 
about the AI. And I use the term pro tip here really just to get students to focus in on how important it is for them to understand that AI remembers the conversation that you're having. So as long as you're in one conversation thread, you can ask it follow-up questions and it will remember everything that it said in that thread. However, sometimes that gets a little bit clouded and you want a fresh perspective, you want something new. And anytime you want a blank slate where AI has no memory of the conversation, all you have to do is go up to the top left, click new chat, and uh, you will have a very blank slate and the AI will not have any information besides what you started with. And one last bonus tip is we talked about AI image generation. And if you use a tool like Dolly, you can just search in uh, what you're looking for. So you could type in, you know, a bluebird on a purple flower and you see the results are pretty good. They're not great, but uh, they're not terrible. But you can also ask one of uh, the AI tools to give you a prompt and it will help you word things in a way that's very specific to those AI gen uh, image generation tools. So here's the example where I say, give me a prompt of a realistic photo of a bluebird perched on a purple flower. You'll see it gives me very detailed language. If I copy and paste that in, you'll see my results are much better. So this is just a very brief overview, but a great conversation starter for you to have with your students, whether you're using the presentation or just having a discussion, because this shows the students that you understand that AI is being used. It's being used in the world for major corporations. It's disrupting industries. Education is always a little bit slower to adapt, but your students will be using this and it's going to change the way they learn and the way you teach. So having that conversation with them, showing that this is a partnership, you want them to use it in a way that will actually help them, I think will be a great way to start the school year. Uh, again, if you have either one of these presentations, it does extend a little bit and talk about uh, how AI is even being used in search engines, but how students can use those search engines um, and you know ways for them to avoid that misinformation and disinformation, again, especially because AI is making it so much more difficult. So if you know of any teachers that can benefit from this presentation uh, or this video, please send them links to the presentations or send them a link to this video because this is something that teachers shouldn't fear. They should embrace um, and having some of this knowledge will help them uh, facilitate that conversation. Uh, so I do want to thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below or let me know if you're using AI in any ways uh, that have been really creative or that you've seen students have really responded to. And please also take a second, give this video a like, uh, hit that subscribe button if you're new to the EdTech Show and click on that notification bell so that you get notifications every time there's a new video. And if you haven't followed me yet on social media, please take a second, follow me on Twitter at Dan Spada. And on Facebook at facebook.com slash The Ed Tech Show. Thank you again for watching. I really do appreciate it. And I'll see you next time.